Let's see, what am I missing here? Oh, oh, oh yeah. Hat, check. Sunglasses, check. Pepsi, check. Notes, check. Sources, check. And thick skin, check. Let's go. Welcome back to Going Uploaded, everybody, and all we do here is college football. So if you're a college football fan, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. And as always, feel free to send gear to represent you and your team. Look around. That's what my background is made of. So if you want to be a permanent part of Going Uploaded and my background, send gear to represent yourself and your team to P.O. Box 360, Liberty, South Carolina, 29657. Well, here we are again. Another make or break game for Neil Brown as the head coach of West Virginia. Yep, the rumor mill is swirling once again. The last time a make or break game was labeled was at Virginia Tech. And of course, we, we did go on the road and beat a bad Virginia Tech. But this time, it's a bigger challenge. Much bigger challenge. At least it's not on the road. But Mighty Baylor. Mighty Baylor comes into Morgantown to take on the West Virginia Mountaineers. Baylor's 3-2, and two, West Virginia's 2-3, and three, and a lot of people are saying West Virginia has to win this football game if Neil Brown wants to keep his job at West Virginia. I would tend to agree with that because I think it's 7-5 or bust. Anything lower than 7-5 and, and he's got to go because we're not seeing progress. That's the main thing that I want to see this year. And the offense, yeah, big, big progress, big time progress, except for the drop passes. My gosh, start catching the ball now for the defense they've actually taken a step back so I, I i don't know what to say about that because the defense has has kept us in football games over the past three years that we had absolutely no business being now they've taken a big step back and our offense is good so when are we going to put it together all right let's talk about this game Baylor at West Virginia. Like I said, Baylor 3-2, and two, West Virginia 2-3. and three. Uh, Baylor, they have beaten FCS Albany. Uh, they beat Texas State, and they beat Iowa State on the road. So, so that's a decent win. Their two losses on the road to number 21, BYU, and number 9, Oklahoma State at home. So they haven't lost to any bad teams. Now, for West Virginia, they lost at then number ranked 17, Pitt, Kansas at home, and then at Texas. So uh, maybe the road loss to Pitt is the worst loss we have because Pitt's not that great. But it was what we saw in that last game on the road to Texas, a, a pretty much a blowout loss to Texas. And it was because of the first half, West Virginia did make adjustments, and we actually won the second half 13 to 10. But still, it, it, was not, it was not impressive at all. I, I thought we were going to lose the game, but I thought it was going to be much closer than that. So I didn't like what I saw in that game. The offenses are pretty similar. Baylor's averaging 37.4 points per game, which is 26th. And West Virginia's averaging 38.2 points per game, which is 29th. But defense, this, this might be where the game is determined. Because Baylor is just allowing 20.6 points per game, which is 37th. But West Virginia is allowing 29.6 points per game, which is 92nd. So our defense has to be much, much better for us to win this football game. I do think that West Virginia has the better quarterback. Uh, JT Daniels overall, 115 for 181. That's 63.5% throw for 1,209 yards. Eight touchdowns, two interceptions, but those two interceptions should not have happened. The first one was a tipped pick six against Pitt, which cost us the game. And the second one was a pick six, but in overtime against Kansas, which cost us the game. Now, Blake Shapen, the quarterback for Baylor, is 97 for 140. That's 69.3%, but it hasn't thrown it nearly as many times as JT Daniels. He's thrown for 1,118 yards, nine touchdowns, and three interceptions. Now, for Baylor, they averaged 298 passing yards a game. West Virginia averages 268 passing yards a game. Baylor averages 187 rushing yards a game. And West Virginia averages 186 rushing yards a game. So it's pretty even. It's the defensive stats that kind of concern me. West Virginia allows 230 passing yards a game. Baylor allows just 223 passing yards a game. West Virginia allows right at 100 rushing yards a game. And Baylor allows 96 rushing yards a game. 
So even their defensive stats a little bit better than West Virginia. Not as big of a gap as what I thought it was going to be. Now what about their remaining schedule? Well after this, Baylor gets number 19 Kansas at home, then at Texas Tech, then at a bad Oklahoma. Then they get number 17 Kansas State at home, number 13 TCU at home, and then at number 22 Texas. So they still have four ranked opponents on their schedule. For West Virginia after this game, at Texas Tech, number 13 TCU at home, at Iowa State, Oklahoma at home, number 17 Kansas State at home, and then at number eight Oklahoma State. So we have three ranked teams left on their schedule, but we also have a tough road slate. This, this is a must win game for West Virginia, especially for Neil Brown. I mean, this is year four. We should be seeing progress by now. Uh, I have been behind this guy much longer than most people have been. And I know it's a huge buyout, and I know a lot of people still want to give him some time this year and then possibly next year, depending on if JT Daniels stays or not. But my gosh, we have to win this game, guys. We have to win this game. And of course, I will be live streaming this game. And even if West Virginia does win this game, you will see a mad golden blue dude at times because I know we're going to make stupid mistakes. So even in a win, I get really, really mad because of stupid mistakes that should not happen. And hopefully those stupid mistakes won't cost us the game like it has in the past, so it probably will. But we'll see. Hopefully in the end, you'll see a happy golden blue dude but who knows? This is a very inconsistent team. This is a very uh, mistake-prone team shooting themselves in the foot over and over and over and over and over. Listen, if we'd stop shooting ourselves in the foot, we'd be at least 4-1. At least 4-1, maybe 5-0, oh, depending on Texas. So get rid of the self-inflicted mistakes, and West Virginia has an excellent opportunity of beating Baylor. However, I don't see us quitting those self-inflicted mistakes. So this game is going to be much closer than it should be. Having said that, I do think West Virginia wins this football game. It's in Morgantown. It's a night game. I don't think Baylor is as good as Kansas. Don't get me wrong. Baylor is a good, good team, but not quite as good as Kansas. So I think West Virginia gets the job done in a very, very close game. I'm going to take the Mountaineers 38-35, and it will come down to a defensive stop. So the defense will have to come up with one important stop to win the football game. But I think there's just enough gas left in the tank. And I think Jacoby Spells will be the star of the defense tonight. I think he'll get an interception. I'm predicting it. I think Jacoby Spells gets an interception tonight. And that could be the difference in the football game. I'm taking the Mountaineers. 38-35. to But it wouldn't surprise me if it swung the other way. It really wouldn't. That's how inconsistent this football team is. Both of these teams are coming off a bye. West Virginia has done well off a bye under Neil Brown. So hopefully this is the turnaround, or at least the start of the turnaround for this season. Maybe we can salvage this season going 7-5. I mean, to go 8-4, and four, we can only afford one loss, and I just don't see that happening, not with this remaining schedule. So two losses, that's doable, but we have to win tonight for that to happen. That's the bottom line. Y'all let me know in the comment section. Number one, do you think West Virginia wins? And number two, if West Virginia doesn't win, do you think it's game over for Neil Brown in Morgantown? That's all I got for you for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on my next show.